Alrighty, good morning folks. So I wanted to uh, take this short video of my uh, Brogdon avocado tree. It's been a while since I've posted anything online and from the orchard, but uh, these, these uh, avocados are a little bit unique in that unlike most other avocados, they actually will change color as they begin to ripen. They don't fully ripen on the tree, but they do change from a green color, a like a um, dark green, olive green color to a dark purple, almost black coloring on the outer, outside of the skin. And you can see that <clears throat> right there is, a sam is a, an example of what I'm talking about. That is a Brogdon avocado that's nearly complete in its transformation. And there are others in the tree that are still green, haven't, tra haven't changed color yet, and others that are actually transitioning to changing color. So let me uh, dismount the camera real quick here uh, from the tripod and take it to up on top of the ladder to give you a better picture. Hang on. Let me get up this ladder. This is a Stokes aluminum, aluminum ladder. Okay, so, okay, hang on, where, where is this thing? There it is. So you see, that is the Brogdon avocado. Notice the color. It's actually not green anymore. Although, if you're careful, if you, I don't know if you can see it with the lighting from the camera, but put it in the sun here, you can actually see a little bit better. Actually, I think this one's about ready to pick. I'm gonna pick this one later today. The other day it was it still had some green, green stippling on the surface, but no, this is completely, completely black now, purple, ready to go. So I'm gonna pick this one in a few minutes here, take it inside the house and let it finish ripening on the table. Unlike um, other fruits uh, and like pears, actually, avocados will never ripen on the tree. You have to actually pick them and let them finish ripening on the table inside the house. Uh, European pears are like that. Um, so, yeah, this one's coming down in a few minutes here. But uh, let me give you a, a view, top overhead view of this avocado tree. This is the top of it. Can't go any higher than this on the on the tripod. Actually, I'm too close to the tree to be able to be able to go any higher. But you can be able to get a, get it completely in the field of view. But I can pan a little bit here for you. That's the canopy, the top of the canopy for this Brogdon avocado tree. There's a little avocado. Might be interesting to use. Some of you might not be interesting. It depends. But it doesn't take much time to actually film it, so I thought I'd include it. Now let me get down, and uh, we will go ahead and uh, take a video. So let me show you what I mean. This is another Brogdon, it's completely green, right? You can see that it's fully green. It hasn't changed color yet, right? You see that? Nowhere near where it needs to be yet. And most other avocados at this stage, you can pick them. Pick them and let them sit on the table and they'll ripen. The day avocado is like that. You can see it here too. There's another green one. Now, here's the interesting part. Look at this one right here. That one is the green one turning purple. Purple black, you see it? See the colorations? That is how this other avocado up there was looking a, few, a little while ago, or more like about a, a couple weeks ago. So you see it's changing color? See that? Green, purple, green, purple. See it there, it's really really noticeable there. Lighting is a bit difficult actually. I had to do this in the morning when the harsh sunlight is out because I have to do some yard maintenance or some maintenance in the orchard. I actually have to cut the grass. I've cut the grass in between the rows of trees, but I didn't go in between the trees and I'm having to fix my push mower. I have a riding lawnmower to do most of this stuff, and even though I the yard's not really big enough for a riding lawnmower. 
I still have them anyway because they're convenient to haul materials, supplies, and stuff like that. Fertilizer when I have to fertilize the trees or or um you know spoil when I dig a hole to plant a tree. All that excess spoil I gotta remove it from the yard and put it somewhere. So I use a little cart little cart to haul it. And I pull it with the with the with the lawn tractor. But you can see a view of one of the rows. See that? That's one of the rows, and you can see there's, there's grass in between, grass in between the trees. See that? Grass in between the trees. By the way, this is a sugar apple. For those of you who are not familiar with it, it's a, um, it's a, it's a semi-deciduous fruit tree. In that, in warmer climates down in South Florida, it will not drop leaves in winter. It'll stay uh, awake all, all year round. Uh, here in Central Florida, it's cold enough, so where this tree will actually go dormant in winter, and it'll drop its leaves and just go to sleep and wait until spring. But uh, it's it's native to Central America, although by now it's spread all around the world. Anonas Guamosa, what this is, is the the official uh, botanical name for it. Yeah, sugar apple. They're actually pretty tasty, although they are a bit seedy. They have a lot of seeds in them, so that's one of the drawbacks. These are my regular apple trees, Newtown Pippin. This one's not doing well here. It's, you can see it's partly shaded. So this year, when it goes dormant, I'm going to remove it, uproot it from here, plant it somewhere else in the yard where it gets more sun. Apples need a lots of sun. They, they do not do well in partial shade, whereas Anonas Comosa will. This is a Holstein apple. Look at that. It's actually got a flower. I'm going to remove that. I don't want rogue blooms at this time of year. It's September. They shouldn't be shouldn't be blooming. August, early August or mid-August. But you can see that I have grass in between the trees, so I have to I have to come back and um, clean it. Come back with a lawnmower and I have to fix a little the push mower and, and clean that up. I also have a weed whacker or a weed eater. Uh, I have to be careful though because that that that, um, that cord, that nylon cord, can actually uh, girdle a tree, kill, you know, break, you know, cut the bark all around the perimeter of the tree and the tree will die. So I'm having this other problem in the yard. I don't know if, you're if you can see it. See that white circle there? The whole yard's full of this stuff. These are fire ants. And this is ubiquitous in Florida as in most of the south. I'm having a lot of problems with them because it's been raining a lot lately. And so when it rains, they leave their burrows elsewhere in the woods back there. You see the woods? They leave the burrows out there in the woods and they come over looking for high ground. And my yard happens to be one of the highest grounds in the area. So they'll come here and start digging a little new colony. And then I have to fight them. So that is a bear advanced fire ant killer. Basically it's a slow acting poison. They will, they will walk over it on the way out of their, of their nest at night. Because they're active at night. They, go, they look for, for beetles and insects at night. So they go out feeding at night. And they will travel out out of their burrows, uh, over the mounds, and, and then travel out. You see that the white powder in the perimeter. So any any direction they travel, they'll step over the white powder, and then that white powder they will take it back into the nest. And it, it takes about 24 to 48 hours to work, and it will actually kill the whole nest. It'll kill all the all the ants, and it'll kill the queen. So yeah, I got that problem among other problems. You know, added to the list of problems. Anyway. Uh, let me go ahead and uh, just show you one more picture here of the day avocado tree. This thing is grown, man. It had two avocados earlier this year, and I removed them already. They're inside the house, waiting to, on the table, uh, trying to get them, um, trying to ripen. But this is where they were. You see, this is the stem where one of them was. The other one was down here. See it? That's a day avocado. This this particular variety does not not change color when it's ready to be picked it stays green all year round so you just have to know and then just remove it and let it wrap it on the counter or kitchen counter um, I had another issue with one of my avocados they almost died that's a Joey this one almost died last year I made a, a earlier video about this I managed to save it thank goodness and she's doing better now I put her in a pot temporarily so I can protect her from the extreme heat. 
of the afternoon until she gets bushy. Once she gets bushy enough, you know, lots of branches and leaves, I'm, I'm gonna replant her back in the ground because at that point she can shade the stems and shade all the, all the interior branches so that the sun won't scald them and won't sunburn them to the point where they start dying, where the wood starts dying. So yeah, Joey Avocado. Just pan around here, just show you the orchard where it is right now. That off in the distance, that is a Aromatnaya quince. Actually growing pretty well. I had to fertilize, I had to give a liquid fertilizer because she was causing problems. She wasn't doing anything until I started fertilizing her. She needs a lot of fertilizer. She grows, these quinces grow slow, unfortunately. So it's gonna take a while before these things actually produce anything. There's a, uh, that right there is the, I forgot the name of that one. Um, that's a Turkish quince. I forgot what was, what was it called? Smyrna. Smyrna quince. And then Vandeman quince over here off in the distance, right behind me actually. That's Vandeman. That's a Vandeman quince up there, see it? Not very vigorous. I don't know what's going on with these quinces. I'll have to wait and see. Anyway. As you can see, some of my trees have been doing really well in this excessive rain, like the uh, plums, the Japanese plums, Shiro. It just exploded this year. Look at that. It just went, it went, you know, batshit nuts. And it just started producing tons and tons of branches everywhere. You know, normally in the past, I've actually pruned these branches out. And these little water, water sprouts, you know, the ones that are nearly vertical. I'm not going to do that this year. I'm gonna leave those branches and I'll tell you why one because I don't know where this thing is producing its flowers that's not true I, I I wanted to produce more flowers this year and get more fruit I don't get a lot of fruit from these things and I think it's because of pollination I have pollination problems but, but, but um I'm gonna leave those branches for a year up so that they can generate those leaves can generate carbohydrates and feed the root system and let the root system extend further the following year I will prune them back again to the shape I want but just as I just as I anticipated the the fear that I had was that this tree would grow and basically shade out the other trees behind it and that's exactly what happened this is uh, the, the Shiro plum and off behind it is a Eureka lemon tree and it's starting to be exposed to shade see that shade there creeping up to earn it still it still has Sun enough Sun I think but as these trees get bigger, this is going to be a continuing problem. I'll just deal with it as it comes. And that's the other Shiro plum. The plums seem to do really well here. They do better than the apples for some reason. I don't know why. Some apples, you know, some apples are okay in this climate. Like Anna, Fuji. Um, the other one tropic sweet other apples grow like you know granny smith will grow but they don't grow really fast and it just could be just that the apple genetics is not designed to grow really fast i don't know maybe it's the sun maybe it's a particular soil in the area where i planted it who knows but i have noticed that some apples some apple varieties do well some apple varieties do not so well some apple varieties don't do well at all uh, but the ones that i've had good luck with are uh, this right here, you can see right here, the, all that new growth. This is a, um, shoot, what's the name of it? Granny Smith. This is a Granny Smith from uh, Stark Brothers Nurseries. I have another Granny Smith off in the distance over there uh, that I got from Trees of Antiquity. Uh, they're both doing pretty well, actually. This is a Newtown Pippin. Newtown Pippin, see, it's pretty tall. I haven't really pruned it much. Yes, I know I have a scab problem. I'll have to deal with that later. These English varieties. This is a uh, Ashmead's Colonel. This one's growing pretty good, actually. These two English varieties are doing really well. And this right here. This is a Blue Damson Plum. And they just brought it out and took off. When all that rains came in, they started taking off like a rocket. You can actually see them. So, Blue Damson Plum. Yeah, you can see off in the distance behind that blue damson 
my uh, trop my uh, tropic snow peach is actually starting to drop leaves. She's getting ready to go dormant. This is a very very early peach. This guy will actually start. I think it has like a 50 chill hour requirement, so it starts to throw out flowers in mid January, early February. That's how early this peach is, and as a result, it goes dormant early too. So anyway. I'm going to go ahead and end the video now because it's really, really hot and I need to get back to work to clean the yard. So I'll talk to you guys later. Bye.